Okay, in this third video, I will continue to guide you on how to use the next nodes in the data section. First is the update field node. This node is used exclusively when editing modules. In the My App section, it is not yet usable. This module section is a separate part similar to My App, so you can use it to interact with the account manager. I will make a separate video to guide you on how to use the account manager combined with the module to manage accounts on each device. This account manager section allows you to add accounts here, such as social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, and the format is the usual format when you buy accounts. This module can interact with the account manager using the update field node. The fields in the account manager section include UID, email, and password. You will use these fields to update the status when running the module, updating directly to the account manager. In the account manager section, there are status fields, email fields, password fields, etc. You can add a status field at the end. When running automation and running directly in the account manager section, it will not reload here. You need this status node to know whether the status runs successfully or not. Or if you run a module on a password, for example. After running, it will update a new password for you, updating it in the password field. So, I will have a separate, more detailed video on how to use the update field node. But for this My App, you will not use the update field. Okay, next is the Element Exists node. It works similarly to Jelloin, checking whether an element with a specific XPath exists. Here, I will capture an XPath. This is the current screen of this device. In the inspector, it is similar. I will capture the first app. This is its XPath. I will left click and I will paste it into the XPath section. This timeout is the time it will wait for the XPath to appear. You can adjust it depending on your script and the speed of your machine. You can set it quickly or slowly so the script can run smoothly and accurately. Here, I set it to 3 seconds. Within those 3 seconds, it will check if the XPath is there, and it will run. If the XPath is there, it will run the next step. There, it will run the next step. With the address where I just pasted the XPath. Now I try to switch to another screen. I will switch to another screen. The XPath will no longer appear on the screen. It will fail. It cannot find this XPath. That's it, it's similar to Gemlogen. It will have an element exist check. Okay. The next node is node.getAttribute. This node is also simple. In the inspector, when you select an element, it will have attributes of apps or elements. You can use node.getAttribute to get its attributes. For example, this attribute is photo. You can get the text attribute of the XPath. You can still copy the XPath into it. Then you paste the attribute. The attribute name you will set is text. So its XPath will be here, a path. And you will choose the output variable for it. The output variable you will name it text. Add a new variable, text. Then run this node. It will get the attribute. The attribute value is photo. And it will save it to a variable. You can set the variable as you like. Other attributes can be obtained similarly. The next node is node.random. This node is also similar. This node is similar. It will to randomize a value to save into a variable. For example, here I choose the type. Email. I will save it to a variable called mail. Choose email, email, A. I will create this variable, get email A, then run it. The email A variable will be a random email. Besides email, you can choose many types, like passwords, names, product names, or numbers. You can randomize a number from 1 to 5, 1 to 6. You can apply it to your logic. 
Additionally, you can choose advanced to get commands. Additionally, you can choose advanced to get commands from faker.js. This site provides commands to randomize a type. Here, these types have similar commands. You just need to copy them. Then paste the commands here. Then run it and it will generate the random value. The next node is the HTTP node. This node, if you have used Jelloin, will be quite familiar. It is often used to get OTP. Now, when you rent a SIM or connect to an API. Here, I will demo with the VOTP website. If you rent SIMs to run tasks, you will likely know this site. I will use the HTTP node to rent a SIM from this site. You do not need to access the web, just use the HTTP node. I won't cover the registration part as it's not important. We will start with getting the service, because you need to know which service you want to rent a SIM for. Here, this site requires default usage of GET for all queries and returns data in JSON format. I will choose the method. There are three types, GET, POST, and DELETE. Choose the one you need. I use VOTP, so I choose GET. This URL is the API endpoint of the site. For example, if I need to get services, I will copy the URL provided and paste it here. Each VOTP account will have a different token. This is my token. I paste it here. The country is Vietnam. Then I run a test. It will return a list in JSON format. With services and their corresponding IDs, ID 49 is Twitter. To rent a SIM, you need to know the ID of the service you want to rent for. You will find it and save it to a variable to run the next HTTP node for renting the SIM. Here, let's say I want to rent a service for Yahoo. Yahoo has an ID of 6. How do I get the ID of 6 for Yahoo from this JSON array? I will use the mapping function. It helps me locate the position of the element I need in the array. For example, here are the main elements, status, code, message, success, data. The ID is in the data section, so you put brackets around it. Then use quotes to specify data. Brackets closed. Now, running the HTTP node will get the entire data array. This is the data array with all services and their IDs. Now, how do I get the exact ID of 6 for the Yahoo service? You use another dot to go deeper. Each pair of curly braces is a child element. And they have their index numbers. For example, the first element with ID 2 has an index of 0. Similarly, they increase from 0 onwards, like 0, 1, 2. The element with ID 4 has an index of The element two. with ID 6 has an index you of 4. You just use brackets and select index 4. Now it includes all three elements of the child element at index 4. To get the ID, you just follow the data pattern. Brackets, dot, then ID. Okay, I will name it a variable. For example, I will create a variable called service ID. Okay, I run it again with this service ID. This ID is ID 6 for the Yahoo service. Now I will run the HTTP node. The service ID is 6. I will use this service ID to execute the next HTTP node. After having the service ID, the next step is to request the service, which means renting a SIM. Here, the service I need is Vietnam SIM with ID 6 for Yahoo. Okay, I will create another HTTP node.
I paste the URL similarly. Remember to replace the token, as each account has a different token. Use your token, then put it in the token node and pass it. This service ID, earlier you saved it as a variable, right? My variable is service ID. Delete the default service ID of one and replace it with the variable service ID. Now, after running the first HTTP node, the service ID variable will have a value of 6. You will understand that the service ID to fetch is 6. Similarly, here, I connect them. After running this node, the service ID variable will be 6, and it will return a JSON response. To get the phone number, you assume it is 6 first. When you write, assume it is 6 first to know it's mapping to write the mapping first. Then replace 6 with the variable. Now I will test it. If stat is 200, it runs and it returns a phone number like this. Both are the same. Now I will use mapping to get this one. And I will get the request ID for the next step. After having the request ID, you will get the code to enter the registration service. I will continue mapping. Similarly, select data. It still gets from data. I close it in. Here, not many child elements, so I get it directly. Phone number. I get the phone number. You can choose the variable you need. Okay. Close brackets. Name the variable phone number. Here, I have the phone number. Next, I need to get another variable, which is the request ID. Similarly, get it like the phone number. Replace phone number with request ID. Okay, close brackets. Name the variable request ID. Here. So after mapping, I will replace the number 6 with the service ID to get the service ID. the service ID for me, right? After running, it will save the phone number variable and request ID variable. I close it and run the test. There. After running, the service ID variable is 6 and the request ID is saved. Here is the phone number. Similarly, you will use the APIs below to get the code. Then enter the code in the registration section on the phone. These are the applications of the HTTP node.